Hello, and welcome to the ABCs of Medicare and Medicare Advantage. I'm Keith Leitzen, and with me is Layla Earl. We are with Managed Care Partners, and we support Catherine Shaw Bethea Hospital, KSB, and their education department and their community outreach. And we are excited about doing this session with you. But we also want to remind you that on October 5th, we will be doing two face-to-face -face presentations in Dixon, one starting at 10.30 a.m. and the other starting at 2 p.m. So if you are looking to have additional information on Medicare and Medicare Advantage, I ask you to be watching for news releases. We will be presenting some material and we look forward to having time to discuss with you face-to-face. -face. So Layla, as we talk about Medicare, and Medicare Advantage. There are a lot of confusing things out there. A lot of people just, there's bits and pieces and everybody kind of gets confused. So would you tell us a little bit of what is Medicare compared to Medicare Advantage? Well, Medicare or original Medicare, as a lot of people will hear it called, is think of your red, white, and blue Medicare card. You know, maybe you saw it for your parents or your grandparents, but that red, white, and blue card, it had a part A listed on it and a part B listed on it. And really what that represented was your health care and retirement for uh, hospitalization, part A, and outpatient services, part B. So that's original Medicare. And with original Medicare, you could have a gap plan that would help fill in some things. You could have a retirement plan like TRICARE for Life that would come in and also work to fill in some things. So what is Medicare Advantage? Well, Medicare Advantage or Medicare Part C is still Medicare, but it's different. It's going to look like what you have as an employee with an employer, right? So instead of Medicare CMS or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services being your administrator, you're going to have a national carrier such as United or Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield or Humana. And what Medicare Advantage does is it takes original Medicare A and B, it will add in Part D or your drug plan, and it keeps it in one plan. And everything is encapsulated in this one plan. So you no longer have original Medicare. Your Medicare Advantage or Medicare Part C puts everything in one place and allows a health insurance carrier to uh, work with you on your health and to administer your health care benefits. So you just brought up a key point. There are four parts to Medicare, correct? There, yes, there can be absolutely four parts to Medicare. So you have original Medicare with A and B, you can have a gap plan. And then starting in 2006, you had Medicare Part D or your drug plan for all of your retail pharmacy benefits. So can I have a Part D or drug plan and a Medicare Advantage plan? Can I have them separate with two different companies? No, your Part D plan now will be kind of will be baked in just like your A and B coverage is baked in to that Medicare Part C. So it's taking all the ABC blocks putting in one basket under one carrier so that it, everything is is managed by by one entity. So we really have two distinct programs, but they're very similar. Just one is bundled a little differently. Is that is that a way to think of it? Yeah, that's a really good way to think of it um, because at this point you really are in a in a really lucky position because as employees we don't get to choose how we get our health care. That's chosen for us most of the time by our employer. So as a retiree, you now get to choose. You get to choose if I want original Medicare with a gap and Part D, I can do that. And that allows me a lot, uh, some flexibility that allows me to move around. And, or I can put it all in one basket with one person, meaning I'm only getting one piece of paper at a time uh, with Medicare Advantage. So if we, 
decide I'm I'm going to retire, mm -hmm. but yet I'm still going to work full time. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually I'm Medicare eligible, but I don't want insurance. I've still got my insurance at work. How do how do we do that? Still, no matter what, you need to go to ssa.gov, G-O-V, ssa.gov, and you need to sign up for, for your Medicare benefit, all right? Now, your employer comes into play with how big are they? If they are over 50 employees, you want to sign up for Medicare Part A, you want that, and you want to defer your Part B plan, because your employer plan will be your primary, all right? If your employer is under 50 employees, you want to sign up, again, for your Medicare Part A, your employer's plan will be secondary, but Medicare will also, will, will need to, to kick in as your primary. So if I heard you correctly, I can turn 65, not mm -hmm. retire, but I have to waive my Part B because if I don't, then I have to pay for it, right? Well, you, yeah, you would have to, your, your Part B premiums come out of the taxes that you're paying into um, Social Security right now. And you don't need that Part B benefit. So I don't wanna say waive, I, I like defer because when you do retire, you want to kind of, reactivate that and bring that part B and be able to get your part D plan back. Does that make sense? It does. So that's that's a real big distinction of between waiving or deferring. And I mm -hmm. hadn't heard it that way before. So thank you for saying it that way. You're welcome. Well, you don't want to waive because if you waive it, you could be dismissing it completely, right? And saying, I don't want it at all. And that's really not the case. You just can't use it yet. And or it's not beneficial for you to use it to pay something that you don't really need at this time. So another way or another item that comes up with mm -hmm. that is what they call creditable coverage. What is creditable coverage? And, and that only applies to the drug plans, correct? Credible coverage can apply. In, I think in the case that we're wanting to talk about here does apply to the drug plan, but it can also apply to your health plan. So the ACA um, or the Affordable Care Act listed out and, and mandated items that have to be covered in a medical plan, in a behavioral plan, and in a drug plan. So your employer right now is giving you at the end of each year for your taxes, a statement of credible coverage, and you're filing that with your taxes. You will also need to turn that into SSA um, when you are choosing your Medicare Part A and deferring Part B to show that you have credible coverage that will allow you to make that deferral appropriately. So that letter comes from the employer and you yes. need to retain it. Mm -hmm. You do. You need to hold on to it. So don't just send your original to the IRS. Send them a copy and keep keep your original. Well, more importantly, make sure that you actually read your mail. How many people have we talked to that they never received <laughs> that letter, even though they had it? Right. Yeah. You do need to open even the ones that look look you know, ugly and, and like they came out of like a 1970s office, really open those first and because it's really going to be a, an important document. It really is. All right. So now we, we've talked a little bit about Medicare, mm -hmm. but let's talk now or let's shift a little bit to how do I find a doctor and is there a difference between a doctor who is part of Medicare compared to a doctor who is a part of Medicare Advantage? That's a great question because there actually can be a difference. So if your doctor is um, a Medicare participant, participating provider within Medicare, there is a listing that you can go to at medicare.gov.gov and that they will pull up every provider in the United States, every hospital, any practitioner that is accepting Medicare. 
So with original Medicare, you can go to any of those doctors, any of those facilities, if they're participating, doesn't matter what state it in, doesn't matter any of it. If you hit a Medicare participating provider, you're quote unquote in network. Medicare Advantage is a little different because remember it's, it's like our employee health plans with our employer where you're given a network and it is a sometimes a narrow network, but it is a defined network of participating providers that you can see and be quote unquote in network, which is really important for you. You want to stay in network because that's what determines lower co-pays, lower deductibles, higher co-insurance rates that help you as a consumer. So you want to, what I do is ask my doctor first, are you participating with, and let's just pick on and say Humana uh, Gold, Medicare Advantage, do you participate? And they're gonna let you know right away. And I would also double check with the actual carrier, like in this case, Humana, and go look at their network of providers for your area. Now, this is gonna lead to something else. Medicare Advantage is very specific. Um, it is situst or meaning it's based on the zip code that you live in. So your plans that you have access to or availability for are going to be based on your zip code. Your network of providers is also based on that zip code. So just you know, have, have personal information ready, but you want to sort it by the zip code you live in and maybe not by your nearest large city, like in my case, St. Louis. So let's break that down a little bit, a mm -hmm. little bit more, okay? okay? So participating in Medicare and participating in Medicare Advantage really are two different roads. They are, absolutely. So, so if that's the case, my red, white, and blue card changes too, correct? Oh, absolutely. If you go into Medicare Advantage, your red, white, and blue card just goes away. <laughs> you need to keep that in a safe place, keep it in the back of your wallet. If you have a safety deposit box, something at home, put that red, white, and blue card away because in Medicare Advantage, you will not show that again to a provider. You will use the card that was given to you by the insurance company. They are going to send you a health insurance ID card that you will need to use for all of your care. So that's important when I go to my doctor and each year that could change because I might change plans, right? Right, right. So think of it like we're at work, right? Uh, as an employee, you might sometimes your health care, your health plan changes every year and you get a new ID card and you've got to give that now to your doctor again. Same thing with Medicare Advantage. Anytime you get a new ID card from your carrier with Medicare Advantage, you need to make sure that your, your doctor or your hospital, the clinic where you're getting your lab tests, wh whomever has that new ID card. So we've talked a little bit about Medicare, talked a little bit about Medicare Advantage. We've talked about participation how that differ, differs with Medicare compared to Medicare Advantage. But let's talk now about, I don't like my doctor. How mm -hmm. do I change? If I'm, if I'm in an HMO, can I change my doctor at any time? Absolutely. You are not locked in. If you are not happy with a provider in an HMO and that's your primary care provider, you can go online to the to the carrier themselves or call the customer service 800 number on the back of your ID card and say you need to change primary care providers. Now, if you have a doctor in mind that you can give that name to the service rep and they can see if they're in the network, if they are, and they have availability or they can accept a new patient, then they will go ahead and sign you up. If you don't have a doctor in mind, they may email you or list you off a group of names and you can choose there or take some time, do some uh, Google research on them, look at some provider reviews because providers are reviewed online just like everything else is reviewed online and choose the doctor that fits your needs. So it's very important to be familiar with the insurance company website as well as your doctor's website or your hospital's website, right? It is. Uh, they, 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 carriers will send out 
paper provider directories, that's getting fewer and farther between because the directories change so quickly. So, you know, it, 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 they're not always the most reliable if they're in paper. So as a consumer, what I would say is be very careful on the addresses you type in. So previously I said ssa.gov. If you're looking or medicare.gov, that means you're going to that government website. If you need to go to Humana, you need to make sure that it's humana.com because the way the search engines work, there's a lot of salespeople that really want your information and they're gonna make things kind of travel to their homepage. So unless you're really looking, um, a phrase my nephew taught me was hover to discover. If you don't see that carrier's name clearly and .com, if it's something else there, move on until you get to humana.com, uh, uhc.com, and, and go directly to the carrier. Or you, you could end up on a website, and then you, you're going to get a lot of stuff you don't want. Well, and along with that, we want to really stress, do not give out your Medicare number. Do not give out your Social Security number. That is private. No one who is helping you with Medicare will ask you for that information. No one with it with Medicare and even the insurance companies, mm -hmm. they're not going to ask you for that personal information. They're yeah. only going to ask you for your ID card, which again, different than your red, white, and blue card. Right, right. And I think the big thing is, and this is probably where I think people get the most confused is, you know, for 65 years, we've been taught, you know, turn in your, your Medicare red, white, and blue card. Medicare Advantage is so different in your red, white, and blue card doesn't, doesn't really come into play for you. It's, it's not a part of you getting care in a Medicare Advantage card. That plastic insurance ID card, on the other hand, is vital for you to be able to get care and and more importantly for you as a, as a consumer pay the right amount you know if you don't have that card you could end up paying more than than you actually should be and and i, I know i don't want to see that happen to anybody okay so we've talked about original medicare a mm -hmm. and b we've talked about part c which is medicare advantage which is the bundle of A and B plus part D, which stands for drugs or prescription plans. So let's talk a little bit about prescription plans and how that works. So aren't all prescription plans the same? In function, yes. In reality, no. So what does Layla mean by that? I'm not trying to be obtuse, but they, they function the exact same way. You can go to your pharmacy, a Walgreens, a CVS, a Walmart, wherever you met, wherever you get your, your prescriptions from, turn in your, your insurance ID card and pick up your retail prescriptions. Where they are different is in something called a formulary. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to do a little history lesson on formulary because formularies came out of hospitals, um, which is where I've worked for most of my, my career. And what it was, was actually a physical term. The hospital pharmacy is usually in a very small area with very limited physical shelf space for things that they could keep on hand. So a formulary listing was developed to let them know this is what we have because it's all the space we have. So what that came to, and that's where you get that things of it's, it's tightly controlled, it's constrained. Well, it was tightly controlled because you only had this amount of space and people wanted that much drugs and, and they couldn't do it. So today, what that means is in the formulary world is each individual carrier can have different listings. Um, everybody covers generics. But when we get past generics to brand name drugs, to specialty drugs, they can really change what they cover and how they cover it. So what you're gonna see is something called tiers. And you have a tier one, tier two, all the way up. Some I've seen go up to tier five. 
So tier one, think of one as one is number one. That's our favorite one because what that means to you as a consumer is it's going to be that's your cheapest line. Any drug that falls on tier one is going to cost you the least amount of money. As they go up in level, they usually become more expensive for you for your co-pays or any, any, any plan maximums you have. What you need to know is, where do the drugs I'm taking fall within these tiers? So to do that, you need to, and there's a very secure way to do, to do this at medicare.gov, you can literally put in all of your medications and dosages it will create a profile. And as you look at Medicare Advantage plans, or if you're going with original Medicare and a Part D and you look at those drug plans, it will list out where your current medications fall within each of those plans. So you know upfront before you choose what's covered, how it's covered, and what it's going to cost you. Which is extremely important because copays change, copays can be different one insurance company to another and mm -hmm. that because of that drug formulary being different you have to be very careful because maybe even your pharmacy you might want to double check maybe walgreens mm -hmm. is less expensive than a cvs or mm -hmm. you know vice versa but it, but you got to be careful too because you don't want to spread your medications across to too many you want to keep that as close to one as you can right you do because you know, you want to, I think the biggest frustrating thing, and, and my mom knows I use her in conversations like this, is if you have a number of medications and you're used to paying everything on tier one or tier two, and all of a sudden it jumps up to tier three or tier four, that's not really helpful on a budget. So if we know where we're trying to keep things, then having that comparison is really important and being able to get them in one area for me is pretty vital. So we've talked, do a little summary very quickly. We've talked mm -hmm. about original Medicare, A and B, right. talked about Medicare Advantage, which is part C, mm -hmm. and then we talked about part D. Now, whether you bundle it in a Medicare Advantage or you do a Medigap plus a part D, you want to make sure that your doctors and your hospitals are connected, that they're the ones you're working with are in those plans. So we've talked about that. So let's do one final thing and then we'll wrap this up. What about dental, vision, hearing? We see all these lovely advertising that those are included. What does that mean? Well, Medicare Advantage, because it is based on looking like insurance coverage we have as employees, they have been able to bundle in most of those plans coverages to cover dental visits, to cover hearing aids, um, to cover hearing exams, to cover eyeglasses and eye exams. These items are not normally, are not covered under original Medicare. If you wanted that coverage with original Medicare, you would have to buy a separate policy if it's available to, to have that coverage. So the Medicare Advantage plans can even, some plans have exercise programs, gym memberships and, and things like that, um, ride services. It, it really, there isn't a standard, every Medicare Advantage has dental vision, hearing, car rides, you know, that that's not, there isn't a standard, but many of them have this really nice, uh, cafeteria offering, if you will, of different things that you can utilize. Uh, if, if that's something that you're needing and looking for, it can become a, a good benefit. Some people need it, some people don't, but it's an option with Medicare Advantage that's baked into the plan that is not a an original part of original Medicare. And um, I do have a point after after this, because we didn't, we missed one, one thing when we were talking about original Medicare. If you have a retirement plan like TRICARE for Life, or if you're part of the railroad workers, any collectively bargained, you know, union plan that is a retirement plan that follows you and becomes uh, your secondary or gap plan to original Medicare, that's a, that's a phenomenal offering. It's something everybody's worked really hard to earn. 
you need to know if you choose a Medicare Advantage plan, those plans don't coordinate. They don't, you, you cannot use them with original Medicare. And you need to be very careful because if you opt out of some of those plans, you can't opt back in. So if you go to an original Medicare plan and, and I'm going to use my dad with TRICARE for Life, and he doesn't want to use his, tri can't use that TRICARE for Life for the year he's in Medicare Advantage, he still needs to pay his premium on TRICARE for Life for the year he's not in it, because if he opts out, he's out for good. He can't get back in. So think of what you have um, as a as a retired worker coming in, either from your job, uh, from the government, from the military, and how that works, uh, and ask questions uh, to your HR office, especially if it's a if it's an independent business or your union representative. If I use a Medicare Advantage plan, what happens to my retirement plan? Because you don't want to lose it. I mean, you've worked really hard for it. I I'd hate to see you lose it. Very important point because again, whether you're a state of state employee or or a large employer who's offering Medicare Advantage as, as an option for you, you have to make sure you're you're following all of the guidelines, all of the the items that are available to you, which is why we're here. We want to yeah. be able to help you guide you through some of that. Uh, again, we will be on site in Dixon uh, in October. We'd love to see you at those meetings. Feel free to reach out to KSB. They have people at their disposal to you that will help you go through this information. They'll help you find a doctor if you're having troubles doing that. And again, remember several websites, KSB. Go to their website. They have information right at the at your fingertips right there. Remember ssa.gov or mm -hmm. Social Security Administration. And remember, lastly, medicare.gov. The GOV is very important because obviously it stands for government, but it keeps you away from sales organizations. That's what's really important with that. We thank you for your time today. If you have questions, if you have anything that you would like to follow up on, please reach out to KSV. They will be able to direct you. And we look forward to seeing you in October. Have a great day.